They don't pay us to think. They pay us to know. We know we can beat them. It's no excuses, but we shouldn't. Win the game. Period. W is on three, man. Talk to my Let's go. W on three. One, two, three. W. w. Welcome, all my fellow Redskin brethren and sister. I am your man and resident Redskins fan, Lou. Thank you for joining me here on the Red Skins Report Live. Week number one at the Arizona Cardinals. Redskins looking to kick off the 2018 regular season with something they haven't done under Jay Gruden since he took over as the head coach back in 2014. Get a win. And so we'll see what happens. This is the first time the Redskins have been on the road in a season opener since, you guessed it, Jay Gruden's first year in 2014 when the Redskins opened at Houston. Ugly performance then. Redskins lost that game, I believe it was 17-6. to six. It was bad. And it hasn't gotten much better for Jay Gruden over the life of season openers in his career. The following year after that, let's see, 2015. Uh, was that the Dolphins year? 2015? I don't know. Maybe. Steelers were in there somewhere. Got our ass whooped on a Monday night. Eagles got us last year. I'm missing one somewhere in there, I believe. Jay Gruden's openers that haven't went well. Um, anyway. Everything I'm going to say to you is pretty much a contradiction of what I'm hoping happens, what should happen. I mean, over the last 10 games against the Arizona Cardinals, we're 8-2. and two. We play well against the Arizona Cardinals. Historically, remember, they used to be in the NFC East back when there were 30 teams in the league, before the league expanded to 32. The NFC East had five teams in the division, the Cardinals for the fifth, we used to beat up on the Cardinals, especially when we were good. Problem is, we struggle in Arizona. When they come to FedEx, no problem. We take care of business. Goes all the way back to the Kurt Warner days. We take care of the Cardinals. Even when they were good, they come to FedEx, they get an L. Problem is, when we go to the desert, we don't fare well. Last two trips out there haven't ended well for the Redskins. Most notably, and most recently, in 2016, in a year that we should have made the playoffs. And that was, to me, the turning point of the season. That game in Arizona, we win that game, we go to the playoffs. For a different team, different mindset, that game, to me, was the beginning of the end of the Redskins season in 2016. Kirk threw a back-breaking pick. Late in that game with a wide open Jamison Crowder over the middle of the field. Have we heard that before? No Kirk, uh, Kirk Cousins to blame this year, though, as Alex Smith will lead us into the 2018 NFL season and for the foreseeable future. Adrian Peterson will be our lead running back, which gives us hope that the run game will actually be impactful in 2018. Big question mark at wide receiver. The return of Jay Reed at tight end. Also, VD looking to have another strong campaign to follow up the very strong campaign he had last year with Jordan Reed out of the lineup for most of the season. Offensive line healthy for the first time in a long time, which is a good thing because we're going to need them. Have good depth behind our tackles, not so much on the interior. A little worried about that. I'm not going to lie to you. Look at the defensive side of the football. We've talked about this when we talked about the 53-man roster. Um, defensive line, Redskins, and we can talk about that here briefly. Redskins added a defensive lineman in Caleb Brantley out of Florida. Remember, he was a guy that was looked upon as a late first, early second round pick coming into the draft. Had some issues with domestic violence. Did he put his hands on a female? Um, it's, it turned out to be erroneous, but it dropped his draft stock dramatically. Browns took him in the sixth round. He was, according to many reports, just starting to get it in Cleveland, was starting to come on. They decided to move on from a new regime, 
obviously, you know how that goes. He was drafted by the last regime. New regime comes into Cleveland. He's one of the guys that's a holdover from the last regime. They uh, come in, bring some of the new stuff that they just brought in, exit some of the old stuff that was left over from the last regime. He was one of the casualties. We pick him up and we cut loose one of our own homegrown products, a guy that we liked a lot in Anthony Lanier. And um, sucks to see Anthony Lanier go. It does. It really does. Because uh, we liked him. We thought that he had a lot of potential and promise, and we just felt like he needed more snaps. But evidently the Redskins saw otherwise and decided to take a, a run at Caleb Brantley, and, and we'll see what he brings to the table. Guy's talented. There's no doubt about that. Uh, we'll see if, and I have nothing but the utmost confidence in our ability to get the most out of defensive linemen uh, with Jim Tom Sula as our defensive line coach. Doesn't always work. We've seen this in the past, okay? Um, didn't get the most out of Terrell McClain. And so it, it happens. But nonetheless, I like what I've seen uh, out of Caleb Brantley, and so we'll see if he can add to this Redskins roster. But he shouldn't have to play a lot right now. You know, with the depth that we have up front defensive-wise, he shouldn't have to see the field too often. So we'll, we'll see what he's able to bring and, and the depth that he provides uh, this defensive line um, moving forward. But um, no, no big moves, no big surprises on the roster. There was a surprise cut, that being – uh, linebacker Martrell Spray, I did not, I repeat, not see that one coming. You know, them keeping five running backs, it wasn't out of the realm of possibility. I didn't think they were going to do it. I thought they were going to put uh, Byron Marshall on IR and keep him there. And um, he wasn't hurt serious enough for them to do that. And I told you from the jump, they liked Byron Marshall. He was going to make this roster. And if he would have stayed healthy, I really think in my heart of hearts, he would have made the roster over a guy like Robert Kelly, and we would have had four backs. If he would have stayed healthy all preseason long, less reps for Robert Kelly, I think that you're looking at a, Rex, a Redskins roster right now that only has four backs on it. But because he got injured, more reps for Robert Kelly, more opportunities for him to show off pass protection and his ability to catch the football, which we didn't know he really could do. He's catching it well this preseason. They kept him around. And so the Redskins go into the season with five running backs on the roster. So that was a little bit of a surprise, but it, it, that didn't make my head explode. Martrell Spate getting cut was a bit of a surprise, one that I did not, I repeat, I did not see coming. I'm not going to lie to you. I did not think Martrell Spate was going to get cut. As a matter of fact, you saw how I had the linebackers listed. He was one of the first guys I had as a reserve, a guy that I felt was cemented on this roster. I was wrong. So uh, they, they decided to go, and I told you linebacker was one of those positions that we're really deep at as well, and they really like a lot of those linebackers. Um, Josh Harvey Clemens, they like him a lot. Sean Deion Hamilton, they think he's got a bright future. Um, I told you the new Will Compton is Zach Vigil. So they got a lot of guys that they like at linebacker, and Martrell Spate was a casualty, unfortunately. So Redskins moved on from him, but everything else, I only got two wrong. It's the first time I've gotten over 50 on a prediction. I was pretty much spot on. Even on the offensive lineman, which could be a little dicey at times, I, I pretty much nailed it all. I was, so I was proud of myself, honestly. Uh, they kept an extra back. I didn't see that coming. And they cut Martrell Spate. Didn't see that coming. But everywhere else, I was pretty much dead on. And, and it wasn't hard. This roster wasn't hard to decipher. It really wasn't. And I was hoping they would do something on the interior offensive line like they did with Caleb Brantley. I was hoping they would go and, and get something from somewhere else to make me feel a little bit more comfortable about guard and center in terms of a backup. But they, they're, they're going to roll with Tony Bergstrom and Casey Dunn. We'll see what the hell happens. But back to week one in the Arizona Cardinals. They've got a first-year head coach, you know, coming over from Carolina, the ex-Carolina Panthers defensive coordinator. So uh, you're, you're thinking first-year head coach, Sam Bradford coming over, first year with the Cardinals. They got a rookie behind him. So if anything were to go wrong with Bradford, we'll, we'll be seeing Josh Rosen. You're getting David Johnson back in re really what amounts to his first game in, in about a year, year's time. Uh, literally, he got hurt week one, didn't play another game last year. So in effect, you know, you, you, can you can talk about preseason all you like, but 
He didn't get a bunch of touches in the preseason, as he shouldn't. And this is, for all intents and purposes, his first game in a year, in a calendar year. So um, not, not really knowing what to expect. The guy's a beast. He ate us up last time we were in Arizona. And um, he's going to be a handful. He's going to test this Redskins defensive front that we like so much and think is much improved. Zach Brown should be back and healthy. Um, the defensive line should be intact. Mason Foster should be on the field. We should have all of our horses up front. And um, I'm looking forward to the challenge. Cardinals have a revamped offensive line. So I think that uh, we have an opportunity to do some things, build some confidence up front, and maybe stymie their run game. Uh, we'll see how we do against the pass. That third preseason game scared the hell out of me. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, I know it's the preseason. I know you don't game plan for teams. I know you're not looking to go in and, and schematically pick a team apart. However, mano and mano, you against me, who wins? We lost against the Denver Broncos. They destroyed us on offense, on defense, you name it, they did it to us. So that was a little alarming. That was a little disheartening. However, it was the preseason, and I take it as such, and I'm ready to move on to the regular season and see what the Redskins can do. Now, when you look at matchups in this game, let's start with the Redskins offense versus the Cardinals defense. And uh, the first thing that jumps out at me is the Redskins receivers. We don't know what we're going to get out of this group of receivers. We didn't see Jamison Crowder all preseason long. They wanted to keep him out, keep him fresh, keep him healthy, make sure that he was fully ready to go when the season got underway. We don't know what Paul Richardson really looks like in a Redskins uniform. I think he might have gotten all of two touches the entire preseason. So we still don't really know what he is capable of in a Redskins uniform. Josh Dotson, you can say the same thing about him. Even though we're a little bit more familiar with what he brings to the table, we're looking for big things from him this year. Uh, I listened to him talk over the offseason. He says he hasn't been this confident and comfortable in the league since setting foot. He feels really good about what he's going to be capable of doing in 2018. I'm looking forward to it. So, But we don't know what we're going to get out of that group. You know, It's a big question mark. Is Mo Harris going to be ready to go after sustaining a concussion in week two of the preseason? And we didn't see him again the rest of the preseason. You know, what is this group going to look like? Can they beat the likes of Patrick Peterson in that secondary and some of the other guys that the Cardinals have in a very, very talented secondary? Can, can they exploit some of those matchups and win? What about the run game? Can we remain balanced? Alex Smith needs the crutch of a run game. I fully believe that. He needs to be comfortable. They need to be able to stay in second and short and third and manageable. And running the football and staying balanced and being consistent gives you that opportunity to do that and then run play action fake and stretch the field with Paul Richardson and see what this guy can do in terms of taking the top off of a defense. Jordan Reed. Last year, I felt like we struggled on third downs, uh, especially when in comparison to the year prior to that. Um, a big reason why, A, the receivers weren't very good. Okay, Terrell Pryor let us down last year. Uh, Paul, uh, Josh Doxson wasn't where we needed him to be. And Jameson Crowder was dealing with injuries. And there was no Jordan Reed. And I think that supersedes everything that I said before. No Jordan Reed. We need Jordan Reed to be healthy. He's going to be healthy week one. We need him, especially on third downs. He's the go-to guy. And so getting him back in the mix, that's going to be crucial. And good to see him back on the field. It's been a while since we've seen 86 healthy, spry, and ready to go. He's a huge difference maker for us. And if he's healthy, this offense can be dynamic because he'll give us a chance to convert on third downs, which is something we didn't do against Denver in the third preseason game. You know, Vernon Davis with some drops, things of that nature, not stretching the ball across the, the sticks on a fourth down. We need to be able to keep the Cardinals off the field offensively because they've got a dynamic offense. They've got Larry Fitzgerald. They've got David Johnson. They've got Christian Kirk. They've got J.J. Nelson. They've got a bunch of guys that can hurt you in a variety of ways. So we want to keep them off the field offensively. And Sam Bradford, you say what you want about him getting injured and he's injury prone and this, that, and the third. When protected, the guy's cerebral. He was the number one pick in the draft for a reason. Highly accurate, gets the ball out of his hands quickly. I remember him beating us when he was back with the Rams. And we couldn't get a sniff on him because 
it was three step drops the entire game, and they were killing us, peppering us with nickel and dime game. That's what he does, and he does it better than just about any quarterback in the league. You keep him upright, you keep a clean pocket around him, and that's something else that scares me as we go to the defensive side of the football. We got to get pressure on the damn quarterback. Look, first and foremost, you got to stop the run. That goes without saying. But we got to get pressure on the quarterback. We got zero pressure versus the Denver Broncos. Case Keenum tore us a new one because we couldn't get pressure on him. And if we don't get pressure on Sam Bradford, oh, Larry Fitzgerald is going to have a field day. Christian Kirk is going to have a field day. J.J. Nelson is going to get vertical. We're going to be in trouble. So we have to establish the line of scrimmage. We got to win up front. Stopping the run, getting after the quarterback, allowing those linebackers to roam free and make plays on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. We've got to be sound in our principles. Our secondary got torched versus the Broncos. The tackling was poor. That's another thing. We got to tackle better. If that tackling, if that tackling display is any indication of what's to come, we are in trouble. I'd like to think that that was some preseason nonsense that they got out of their system and we won't have to worry about that when the regular season comes, but I'd be lying to you if I told you that I actually believe that. I'd be lying to you. Bottom line is, I think we're better on defense. I think we're better on offense. We've got a more experienced head coach. I like us in this game. I like us in every facet of this game. I think we're the better team. But there's one thing that keeps gnawing at me. We don't play well. Two, actually. I'm lying. There's two things that keep gnawing at me. We don't play well in Arizona. One, and probably the biggest elephant in the room, Jay Gruden doesn't perform well as a head coach in week one. Our teams don't come out prepared, ready to play and win in week one. At some point, don't you think that has to change? I keep telling myself that every year. This is the year that that changes. And then we go out, we play flat, and we lose, and nothing changes. So why am I to believe that this is the year that things change? I have no reason to believe our preseason looked just as bad as it did last year. So why am I to believe that this is any different than last year? Preseason was pretty much a farce again. We didn't play a lot of our starters in many of the games. They didn't get a bulk of the stats. I'm not that confident. And and for, forget about Jay Gruden not having the players ready to play in, in some kind of curse. Forget about all that. We don't win in Arizona. I just told you we've beaten the Arizona Cardinals eight out of the last ten matchups. But those two losses, they both came in Arizona, and they were the last two times we were there. In 2014, they beat us, what, I think it was like 20 to 30. It was 30 to 20, 31, 21. We lost by 10, I know that. And then in 2016, who can forget that game? That one, that one still, it, it just, that one bothers me. That, that, that was a winnable game that we were leading in the second half. We had everything we wanted right in front of us, including the playoffs, and we blew it against a Cardinals team that had nothing to play for. They weren't going anywhere but home. And we let them take us out late in that ball game. So let's get to the final breakdown, man. Let's get to the final. Outcome. It's the final. Oh, yeah. So before I give you my final outcome for this game, um, I'm going to say this. I will be doing the Redskins report every week on Tuesdays moving forward. You know the regular slot, um, 8 o'clock Tuesday night. We're going to get back into our groove. You know, week one was a little hectic, had a lot of things going on. I'll be in a much more um, conducive place to be able to do everything on a timely schedule and manner. So you can expect the Redskins report on Tuesday night 
at 8 o'clock like you normally get it. So be on the lookout for that. Always know Redskins Rapid React after the game has met its conclusion. I jump on live, give you my initial thoughts to hold you over until Tuesday, and we'll be doing that directly after the Redskins game um, in week one versus the Arizona Cardinals. So also remember, Redskins Rapid React, the R3 will be coming your way after the game. None of it's changed, okay? Everything remains the same. That being said, everything points to us winning this game. I think we have an advantage in the coaching department because they've got a rookie head coach. We've got an experienced coach. I think our offense is better than theirs. Um, our offensive line is definitely better than theirs. They may have the advantage in the running back department, but I like what we have at running back. Chris Thompson will be back healthy. I feel good about that. Adrian, Pre Adrian Peterson. AD going back to the scene of the crime. He, he's going to have a little bit of, of adrenaline pumping because Arizona gave up on him too. So I like our situation back there, even though they may have the advantage with David Johnson. But you look at the receivers. They've got Larry Fitzgerald and Cameron Kirk. Christian Kirk, excuse me. But we've got a collection of stuff now. Larry Fitzgerald is better than anything we have on our team. By himself, he wins. But as a collective group, we might have the better group of receivers. They've, they've got a lot of turnover over there in Arizona at the receiver position. They got Chad Williams. They got J.J. Nelson. They got Christian Kirk. They got Larry Fitzgerald. We'll see who, what group wins out there. We got the better tight ends. We got the better offensive line. We got the better quarterback. I like our offense better than theirs. You go to the defensive side of the football. Their defensive line is better than ours from a pressure standpoint. I like our interior stuff way better than I like theirs. But Chandler Jones, better than anything we have on our team. Led the league in sacks last year. Their linebackers. It's a wash. Their linebackers, our linebackers, you can mix and match the parts. They're one and the same. Secondary, Patrick Peterson, better than anything we have in our secondary. At one point, Patrick Peterson, Josh Norman were kind of equals. Nah, Patrick Peterson, way better than Josh Norman. So we'll see what happens. Bottom line is, I like our chances. I just don't like the fact that we're going into the desert. That's what scares me more so than anything else. The fact that we got to go to Arizona and that has been a house of horrors for us. And because of that, I got us taking an L in week one to the Arizona Cardinals. I'm not happy about it. And I honestly think we can win this game. And I'd actually, I'm actually going to be really disappointed when we don't win this game. I'm going to be really just because if you want to be a good team, and I told you, I think the best case scenario for us this year is 10 and 6. If you want to go 10 and 6, you got to beat Arizona. Because I don't think they're going to be that good of a team this year. I don't. And if they win six games this year, I'd hate for one of those six wins to come against us. But that's exactly what I think is going to happen in week one. We're going to go to Arizona and lose. If this game were in FedEx, we would beat the Cardinals. I have no doubt in my mind we would beat them. But this game is in Arizona, and we struggle in Arizona, and Jay Gruden struggles out of the gate, and our preseason wasn't good again, and it feels like another letdown week one. Mistakes, penalties, turnovers, stupid stuff happening that's going to cost us this game. That's what it feels like. I hope I'm wrong. But when we go in the desert, rarely do we come out with a dub. So that's my take. That's how I feel about week one, Redskins at Cardinals, Boy, I hope I'm wrong. I don't want to be dressed in all black like the omen. I hope I'm wrong. But I got this eerie feeling that I'm going to be right. And one of those Eagles fans said, hey, we own the Falcons. We're going to beat them because we just know how to beat them. And I dismissed that. And what did they do? They beat the Falcons because they know how to beat them, especially in Philly feel the same way about the Cardinals when they're at home versus us. It isn't always pretty, but it's usually gritty and a dub for them versus us in Arizona.
Boy, I hope I'm wrong. Man, I hope I'm wrong. I am a Redskins fan, etched in burgundy and gold. My Redskins spirit will never die. Redskins spirit will never fold. Until we meet again, hail to our beloved Washington Redskins. Fellas, go get this dub, man. Don't pay not one bit of attention to the bullshit I'm talking. You're, you're the better team. Go get the dub. Go get it. It's there for the taking. Rookie head coach, a team that's not quite shaped and molded quite yet, primed for a, a win. They're primed for the picking and taking right now. Go get them before they start figuring shit out. Week one, they don't know what the hell's coming. Go get them. I'm just not confident that that's what's going to happen. But in any event, I'm your man, Louis T, signing off. Thank you guys for joining me on the program. We'll be back on uh, Tuesday with the Redskins report. And I'll hold you over with that R3 right after the Redskins and Cardinals game meets its conclusion. But until then, hail to the Redskins. Go get them, fellas. Bring home the dub. I will see you guys next time. Have a go. Louis T. Network.